future Worship regardless Hey young people Don't be discouraged Just be encouraged Don't be frustrated Just be elated God's got plan for you He wants not to prosper you He will take care of you Let him finish that work in you All about the future Yeah Oh yeah Simon's eye on you Greetings, greetings, everybody. Welcome again to another episode of The Buzz. Oh, my goodness. We are here in the thick of another episode following the series, Godly Relationships and Sexuality. Over the weeks, we have covered different topics such as sexuality, gender, relationships, whether they be non-romantic or romantic. And today... We are at the first of a two-part series on marriages. Today, I want to invite um, a couple that I love and I respect very much. Uh, they've been married for under five years, and I so believe that they have a lot to share, a lot of experiences that they've gone through, a lot of different things that um, has happened during the short time that they want to share with you to enlighten us on what it is really like as young married Christians in the church. And so I will just give them the opportunity to introduce themselves. Go ahead, Mr. and Mrs. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Um, we are the Rileys. Um, my Ooh, name what? is Nevita Milton Riley host of the no longer silent podcast and i'll let my husband introduce himself hi um my name is jonathan riley or brother riley as many people call me i'm the husband of the host of no longer silent. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness it's good to have you it's really really good to have you um it's crazy to think that sister riley and i we've been friends for a very long time you know all the way back in jamaica and so she, my, the other day I was talking to her and she was cursing me out. She was like, you don't talk to me anymore. Really, really. You are my husband, a better friend than me, you know, and just, it's like all kind of different things. <laughs> but it is really good to, to sit down with you guys. Um, and it's really a blessing. I've also been able to, to watch portions of your life as young Christians, as young married Christians, that is. Um, because before I moved back home with my parents, I was with you guys in Georgia. Yeah. How long now have you guys been married? Tell the people. Why are you looking at me? Three years <laughs> and a couple of months. I am trying not to be very vocal because if you know me, you know that I'm a talker. So I'm trying to give him. That's how we compromise. <laughs> you, you do the talk and I just, you know. Yeah. But that is good. That is good, right? Because one of the things that we, we spoke about um, previously is the different dynamics in relationships, right? That there are some persons that are just extroverted. They, they, they go out, they're pursuers, they, they talk, they make themselves known. There are other persons that are just laid back, chill, kind of, you know, I'll talk to you. I'm not afraid of talking to you, but you have to kind of come in my sphere first. What was that like, Brother Ryan? Right? You being the introverted man, seeing a woman like Nikki and saying, I am not going to make a move, man, because that girl, I like, catch my eye. Um, it was nerve wracking. Um, I think I've, I've given the testimony of how I first saw her. Um, it was at a convention quite a while because I was still in I think I either was in the middle of college and she was leading a praise and worship a testimony service rather and she, you know at the end of the testimony service the persons who are leading usually give a testimony uh -huh. and she was giving a testimony about uh, a close encounter that she had where she almost fell into a tank at her college and I was like I, I don't know the voice came in my mind like oh 
I may not get another chance to talk to this girl. So I have to find, I have to figure out a way to say something to her. But as you said, um, I'm not an extrovert. I'm an introvert. I, uh-huh. I, I was telling somebody the other day that um, before be married, if I had a choice between talking to somebody on the phone or texting them, I'm going to always text you first. No, no matter what, yeah. no matter how urgent it is, I'm going to text you first. So um, I tried to figure out a way how to talk to her. So I, I laid out this entire plan. I, I said that I'm going to be friends with her on Facebook because at those times, Facebook was the big thing. Yeah. Um, I, I, I had this detailed plan. I didn't want to just add her. So I added people who were her friends. So it, so it wasn't just this random guy that just showed up out of nowhere. It was this big plan. And I remember trying to text, um, trying to send her a message. And I would wait when she's not online. Like, I'll go, is she online? Yes, I have to wait. She gone. All right, let's text it. And I would text and I would wait for like days and whenever, you know, she, she would look at it, but not respond. And, you know, um, she eventually responded and we talked for a while, but then things kind of just, you know, you know, you know, holy it is. Sometimes you don't connect the first time. Yeah. But, but I'm a person who doesn't give up. Like once I'm into you, I, I'm going to. Come on, no man. <laughs> so, you know, in all of that to say that, it, it was hard because I knew who was she was. I, I, I wasn't at the place that I am now where I'm a bit more vocal. I was really scared to do stuff. I, I didn't want people to know who I was, you know, all of that. But no, looking back, I'm kind of glad that I still was like that because I think it was something different for her. You know, she ah. used to the guys just coming out and saying whatever. I had to be very creative. Ah. Um, you know, I'll, I'll let her tell her side of the story, but yeah, I had to do a lot. When you're an introvert like me, you have to be very creative to to talk to people who are extroverts because they're used to people being their face. So if you're not saying anything, they're like, okay, on to the next person. That's, that's, oh my goodness. That's the tip of what we were talking about. Like, like it's, it's right on the nose. We had this discussion two episodes ago. Right about how um, introverts and extroverts are different, and the approach to these people are so different. All the while you were there talking, your wife was just cheesing. She was just laughing and giggling, and even though people, if you could see her face, if you could see her face, <laughs> she's so excited. I'm gonna give you a chance. Share, share your, share your perspective. <laughs> All right. So um, when he saw me, I. I knew of him, but uh, didn't know of him at the same time. <laughs> I get you. I get you. <laughs> yeah. So all of what he said, I knew this like years later after we became friends because I didn't know that he actually saw me from that time and whatever. But um, it's pretty much what he said. When he came, he had to really work for my attention because... Um, I, I'm used to those kind of guys who just, you know, just come and just tell you. Because I guess some people would say that um, I can be intimidating for guys. I, I don't know how, but I've heard that before. Um, and so uh, it's usually the brave ones who comes up to me. But um, he was very persistent, like he said. Uh, uh, and... <laughs> You were. (laughs) No, no, not in a stalkerish kind of way. But like he said, it was something new. It was a new approach for me. And it was one that caught my attention because now we're married. But um, it was a new approach because it was more of a friendship approach than it was a me want you or I want you kind of approach. Mm -hmm. This This is gems right now. Right, you you don't know how much gold you're giving the people, because a lot of the times what we see is that when a guy is trying to talk to a girl, he makes up a persona, right? He puts on a face, he puts on a front, trying to be somebody that he thinks she wants him to be, right? And Sometimes when they do get lucky and the girl buys into the bait, 
and then they return to their cells, they're like, that's not what I signed up for. You know what I'm saying? Um, but one word that both of you said, persistence, right? And what I could also tell is the genuineness, right? I I, I don't think there was a point where um, Jonathan was being disingenuous. He was always being himself right throughout the 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 pursuit and that seemed to work out in his favor right how do you nikki decipher between good persistence and bad persistence and same for you brother riley what would you tell uh, a young man um who he he's attracted to this girl he likes this girl he wants to pursue this girl but when when he's making his attempts, he keeps getting shut down. He's not getting the text back. What, what do you say to him? When do you draw the line and say, okay, I got to move on. So Nikki, you speak to the girls that are receiving this treatment and, and, and Riley, you speak to the guys that are doing this pursuit. So for me and from my experience, good persistence would be, um, just that level of friendship and care and concern that the person has for you as opposed to the heavy flirting because a lot of people are persistent but it's with flirting like that's what kind of keep the conversation going um you know just everything is has a sexual connotation to it but with jonathan it wasn't like that it was more of I want to be your friend or I I just want to be in your life and just know that you're okay. Because there was a point um, before we got married when we kind of stopped talking and he reached out to my... I, I, don't, I don't really want to say this, but it was <laughs> kind of like I ghosted him. Dum, dum, dum. Um, and now I'm ashamed to actually say this because he's just the best. But um, yeah, I did. And <laughs> he reached out to my sister, Sophia. And he he didn't even want me to know that he had reached out. He he just wanted to know if I was doing okay and whatever, even though Aww. I didn't. <laughs> hey, where's, where's the arm button? I need the arm button. I want the crowd to say all right now. Come on. <laughs> Yeah. And so um, when she came to me, she was like, well, he asked me how you were doing. He didn't want me to know that. He didn't want you to know that he was asking, but he asked me how you were doing. And it was just out of just concern, not saying that he wasn't interested in me, but it was more of I care for you and I just want to know how you're doing than, you know, the, the flirting and all of that. So I think that's the difference between the good persistence and the bad persistence. So ladies, listen, listen, listen. Give those young kings a chance, okay? Like, <laughs> give those young kings a chance. If, and, and, and listen, guys, listen. If you can't get to her, get to a relative. That's that. Find, find a way. But, but on, in all seriousness, in all seriousness, um, be thoughtful and be caring. Right, that's that's what I'm getting here. Don't don't just think about um, satisfying your desires as a man. Oh, I need a girl. I need a partner. Whatever. But y y you're looking towards the twain becoming one flesh, and so you have to be thinking about this other person on on a selfless level. Like, how is she doing? Right what is what is she going through right you don't you don't know why she's ghosting you you don't know why she's not talking to you there could be like some legitimate situations going on in her life get out of your head stop thinking about yourself and be concerning jonathan what you got for us all right um so you asked me to speak from the perspective of the guy who's doing yeah well. okay all right um growing up in jamaica because we're I don't know how many people will be listening to this who are just Jamaicans or who aren't Jamaicans rather. Um, but growing up, especially in men in the world are told they have to be, their mouth has to be really sweet, like sugar. They have to have <laughs> lyrics, they have to have, you know, all of that. And that's good 
many times to open up the avenue of communication. But I find, as you said, that a lot of times it's just a pretense where you're able to talk well and you're able to, you know, maybe get the conversation going and, and you know, being able to let her open up. But a lot of times I feel like we as men are good with rejection. So sometimes when we get rejected, we feel like, oh, I, I just need to talk more. I just need to, to, to be a bit sweeter. Where sometimes, as you said, it could just be the time wasn't right because it was the same thing for us. Um, when we finally started speaking, it wasn't the first time I spoke to her. Um, we, we spoke and I guess she just wasn't into me. I think she was, I think she kind of said that she would either just got out of a previous relationship or a situation or something was going on the first uh-huh. time we spoke. And in my mind, I just said, okay, if we're not going to speak, we might as well just try to be friends. As she said, it was just, here's a church sister. I wasn't in the church the first, first time we spoke, but the second time we did start speaking, I was kind of right at the edge of being baptized. So I said to myself, okay, um, she's going to be my church sister. Um, you know, I have to, the Bible tells you to, to love one another, you know, love your, your neighbor as yourself. And it tells you to do all of that. And I said, okay, just because she's not into me doesn't mean that I just cut off everything. I don't know what the future holds. Maybe we aren't, we don't work out, but let's say I, I want to talk to a friend of hers. If I persist and make her uncomfortable, she's going to talk to her friend and say, yeah, he, he was whatever, you know, he was just a stalker. He just kept, no matter how I said no, he just kept going. And, um, and at the same time, men, you don't want to come off as somebody who just wants to, I know we're in the church and talk real, bro. Talk real. Yeah, I, I know we're in the church, and a lot of times people may say, "Oh, all the churchmen are are great and all of this." But I've talked to other women, and they've told me some stuff that was surprising at the time because I wasn't in the church. So I Come didn't. On, no man. I, I didn't expect that. Um, so I said to myself that I didn't want to be classified. I I don't want after I'm married somebody to say, "Oh, you know, he used to talk to me, and he used to say all of these weird stuff, or these nasty stuff to me, or, or whatever." Um, so I said, all right, I'm going to pursue, but there's also going to be a point where if let's say, let, let's say I just use a, a figure of time. Let's say after two years of talk, trying to talk to this young lady, it just doesn't work out. Um, I got to move on with, they have a saying that there is always more fish in the sea. Mm-hmm. You know, there's, there's always other women in Zion, you know, not everybody that you meet is going to be a person that's going to be prominent in your life so that's how i looked at it that you pursue with a purpose until you get a no and as a man you, you know when that no means like no yeah like, yeah th- this is not going to go any further yeah. you know so you know so once you hit that point and you learn that oh this is an actual no maybe she's just not into it maybe she's not interested but at the same time you don't want to burn bridges like you never know what can happen in the future the no right now might be just for a year or two and in the next year Maybe I should reach out to you, but you Ooh. pursue with a, a, a intent to still keep her as a friend. You pursue with the intent that at the end of this, we're supposed to can see each other and say hi to each other and not want to feel uncomfortable. Want to feel like um, I don't want to see this person ever again because of how he spoke to me or, or how he made me feel. So you guys are hitting a very important core, right? in that in dealing and building and fostering these relationships, they, ha- they, they should be as, as, as pure as possible, right? As, as clean as possible. Because in the event that um, it doesn't work out, in the event, because it happens, right? Not you, the likelihood of the first person you're talking to that's going to turn into your spouse is is low if you're out there and it has happened to you god bless you okay god bless you but that's just not the reality for everyone else and so it is imperative that while in that fundamental stage you 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 treat each other with with respect you treat each other with love you you think in yourself in your mind that all right in the event that it doesn't work out right what what is my name gonna be like in this person's mind? All right, that's yeah. that's beautiful. 
something else that I've been thinking about is that how or at what point um, did it start to get real, right? When you guys looked at each other and said, all right, it's time to put on the ring. It's time to engage and marriage. Talk, talk about that transition between, between dating and, 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 and becoming man and wife. Um, so for me, after that period of not talking, I, I really took a step back for myself. Um, and I'm so happy right now that I did that in retrospect, because when you're, when you are, um, when your vision or your peripherals is clouded with this person and this person and this person, it's really hard to be centered and to make a rational decision. Um, because when you think about marriage, it affects every single aspect of your life. Oh, yeah. This is who is going to be the, 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 the parent that you are raising children with. This is who... Um, the, the decisions that you make are going to affect your finances. Mm -hmm. It's going to affect whether you pursue a career or not. It's going to affect every single aspect of your life. Who your friends are um, mm -hmm. is going to be affected by every yeah. single thing um, when you decide to get married. So mm -hmm. um, I took a step back with a clear vision, not having anybody in my peripherals, not having anybody in my line of vision. And I just did some introspection and some praying and just really talking to the Lord. And I said to the Lord, whomever it is, and when I said that I didn't have anybody in mind, but I said to him, whomever it is, I really want you to teach me how to love that person because the word says that you are love. You are the creator of love. So who else to teach me how to love somebody than the originator of love? And so that led me to Jonathan and we started um, conversing again. And this time it was different. This time things moved very smoothly until we got to that point of, I want to spend the rest of my life with you. Yeah. Um, and just to, to add to what she was saying, um, and also an aspect that a lot of people forget, you know, they talk about friends, but I, I, I wasn't at a point where she was like with, with a lot of things. So I was still kind of young in the fit. Um, I've been well, baptized about five years now. So we've been married three. So I've been in the church about Come two. on, man. So, Blessings so, of the Lord, make it rich. <laughs> so, you know, while she could say that, you know, her immediate reaction was to go and pray and do all of this. Um, my one was like, um, you know, I'm, I'm, cause as she said, we weren't talking for a period of time and I was like, okay, I'm, I'm ready to move on. But for some reason I was talking to somebody else and trying to see if things would work out or where it was going, but we just couldn't get her off my mind. And I just felt like she was the one. And I remember talking to somebody and they were saying that, you know, you should still, you should pray, even if you you feel like the person is good and all of that. And and I try, and I did. I I made the effort to pray, and and like her, I said, God, I don't know who you have for me, um, but I just want somebody who is gonna encourage me to grow. Um, as I said, I, I'm a very maybe people will say I'm not shy anymore, but I, I still feel like before I was a lot worse. Like um, I was telling somebody recently, like even when I was supposed to give my first encouragement on the Wednesday night, because anybody who knows Georgia, we know we have our service online on a Wednesday. Yeah, man. Nine o'clock, check in. Yeah, nine o'clock. I remember Ramin, I typed up my message. Go <laughs> on, preacher. From start to finish. And in it, I remember um the person who asked me to the person who was moderating the service called me to pray to begin the service. And if you know me, if you ever heard me um, talk for that, you know that I have a stutter. So for the entire prayer, I stuttered through the entire prayer. And in the <laughs> preaching, I, I, it was just smooth sailing. And stuff like that, I was saying, God, me, me realize that I'm, I'm not, 
I'm not there yet. Like I still have a lot of room to grow and growing how I grew up, it was just my mom and my sister. Uh, so I didn't have like a, a spiritual father figure to like, you know, show me how to do certain stuff. And you didn't have like somebody you could lean on and, you know, you follow their example. So a lot of things I had to learn on my own and I'm still learning. So I said, God, I want somebody who has like that experience, who's coming from a good background. And yeah, she fit all of that. But at the same time, the person said that they may fit every single check mark, but there may be a one hidden check mark that you don't know about that you need that they need to fulfill. So just talk to God. And, you know, as, as I, as I continue to go and I prayed and the more we talk and the more I realized that even some stuff that I didn't realize that I had on my list, she was starting to show me and I realized that, okay, God, this may be the person. And I can say today that I, I, I know I made a, a right decision. Um, I know God kind of push us in together. Um, we may go through some different periods, but at the end of the day, we're still striving. We're still pushing and going together. And there was this one thing that I just wanted to add. I started it to thought, but I never finished it. She mentioned about friends, but you also have to look at the family that you're going into. Cause that, that mm-hmm. plays a huge, like friends, it, friends, they can't get rid of friends. Friends change all the time, but the family <laughs> never changes, you yeah. know? And, and, and that's the an important aspect. Um, I love my, 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 my parents-in-law. I love, you know, sister Milton, um, pastor Milton, you know, we may not talk as much as, you know, maybe they would want, because again, I am not a talker. You know, if they call me, I will listen. I will say hi, but the, the <laughs> utmost respect is there for them. Yeah. Uh, I, I I love that. I love that. Um, friends can rotate, but family can't change. And, and that is what exactly you guys are building together, a family, right? Two different persons, two different backgrounds, two different experiences. And so I can't even imagine just from the different things that happen within your own lives, within your own circles. Because again, as I said, we, we were friends before you guys get married, right? And so I have a, a, a little insight on, on different things that happen to both of you separately. How do those, those challenges, right? Um, how, how, how are those challenges, I don't know, how do I say this? Added to... Or, or, or even strained different aspects of your of your marriage. Now being three years in, the different things that you've gone through from I don't know childhood coming up, or like how does do how do those stuff affect your your relationship now? Um, one of the biggest things for me was living through um, sexual abuse, and then. Coming into the marriage, I think even now we're we're still fighting that battle. Um, it 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 has pretty much affected every single aspect of our relationship. Dominate. Um, Jonathan says dominated every single aspect of our relationship. Um. <clears throat> And it's been very, very challenging um, for both of us. And I, I absolutely um, just love the fact that God really, the thing about God is that he sees the future and he knows like exactly what you're going to need. And sometimes you might think that this is the person that I'm going to want, but God is like, this is what you're going to need because I can see the future and I know what's going to happen. And I feel like that was one of the reasons why God chose Jonathan for me because he knew that I was in a very vulnerable state and I needed somebody who was going to be patient and really, really understanding um, with me. And so that has been one of the biggest challenges that we've ever had to um, deal with in our relationship. Just me um, going through that trauma. Um, I remember there was this particular night when I, I got out of bed, like the struggle was so real that 
I got out of bed and I was just sobbing. And I came out of our bedroom and I heard him in the bedroom also crying. And when we calmed down and we came back together, he said to me, I see the hurt, but I don't know how to help you. And it really pains me just to watch you go through this. So when you talk about the emotional aspect, the intimacy, the mm -hmm. spiritual aspect, the psychological aspect, this has been our reality. Um, and so that's one of the biggest challenges that we've had in, in kind of aligning um, our, our coming together and blending our past and different socializations and cultures and just coming together. Yeah, um, I was wondering if you want to speak about that particular event. But as for me, all right, what she went through, um, Brother Ramin, is something that I only read in newspapers or you watch the movie about. Um, I've never been in contact with anybody that has been molested or anything, as far as I knew. Um, so coming into the... She, she gave me hints. And maybe at the time, I, I didn't understand what all what she was saying. She did say to me that something happened when she was young. And I was like, okay, I, that's that's okay. Um, it was when you were young, so you sh in my mind, I'm saying you should be good now, cause you're you're 20 plus years old. You know that was when you were really well, a kid, so everything should be good. You have had relationships and all of that, so you must be okay. So coming into marriage, you have the expectation. You're in the church, so that means that you can't go out and go sleep with anybody else when you're not getting on. You have to just learn to sit and just. You know, just wait if you can get a, maybe you get some, maybe you don't get some, whatever. Um, so it was like a challenge, you know, you want to, but then every time you touch her, she's like, she goes into a shell, like she's scared. Um, you feel like every touch, every time you try to touch her, you're hurting your wife. And for me, I I, I couldn't understand, like, I'm married, you, I'm, we are married, you know, um, this is a part of marriage, you know. Everything happened when we were young. And and for me, it was like something that I had to learn. It, how I started, it wasn't how I am now. I think she could say that I'm a lot more patient now. Before, I was like, hey, I can't go to anybody. I, I need I need something. You know, I need a release. I need... But in her mind, it's like, can he give me a moment's rest? Like, I'm I'm going through this. And, you know, learning to be the person that she needs took some time. Um, I had to learn that, oh, it's not necessarily my touch is the problem. You know, it's it's just the memory of what happened to her. Um, sometimes you have to learn to be intimate in different ways. Maybe you don't have sex today, but you cuddle or you, you just kiss or you just wave or you, know, you find some way, some avenue. Maybe you don't even be intimate. You just watch a movie together and talk. Um, talking is, is very important and, you know, it, it, it's something that you have to learn. Again, people may not realize that even when you're shy and you're, you're into somebody, you still have challenges talking. You still have to learn how to talk, how to communicate, how to listen. Um, you know, she, she, she also had a, a medical condition. I won't try to pronounce the name because every time I do, <laughs> I, I start speaking in tongues, but, you know, <laughs> um, but she she had that uh, uh, on top of you know the trauma that happened when she was young. She she had that. She also I don't know if she'll feel uncomfortable saying this, but she also had past relationships that weren't great. So coming as somebody who's kind of fresh, even when I was in the world, I wasn't somebody that dated a lot. I can probably count from from one one hand how many people I've dated, and probably just a few fingers too. Um, so it, I, I never have like this wide variety of experience, and then going into that and then having to deal with all of this and. There were days where I felt like I had to be her Superman. I had to be her knight in shining armor. I had to be any superhero that she needed to be. And I, there were times where I didn't feel like I was that. Or there were times when I didn't feel like being that. I just wanted to be a husband that had a wife. Um, you know, I just wanted to have like the Hollywood experience, for a lack of a better term, where, you know, you look for your wife and she know what you want. And, you know, I'm not going to do anything. But... I had to learn how to, to deal with it. And then, you know, coming from a, a family where we kind of, 
push our emotions aside. People who see me, they, they always kind of say, I don't really show a lot of emotions. And it's something that I've had to learn. Like, you know, you just push through all your problems and you continue and you, you just move. Um, so like having to, to deal with all, like sometimes dealing with her emotions were really hard for me because, and there were, there were times where I was like, oh, can't she just be like, just finish now and just go back to normal? Like, where's the reset button? Like, just turn off and turn her back on. You know, it fix all of the issues and we, we keep going. So I had to learn, like, that's not going to work. Every time you, you make an issue pass or you make a feeling, push it under the rug, it's going to come back tenfold worse. So there were things like that where those things impacted me because I, I had no experience and I didn't know anybody that had any experience with it. So it was things that I had to learn on my own. Yeah. Honestly speaking, I don't even know. I don't even know where to pick up because it is it is so real right now. And I want and I want our, our viewers to understand that this is why we do our shows. Right, whether it's it's youth buzz, whether it's no longer silent, whether it's man on a monster, each of our shows aim to to speak about the reality of our situations as as church people, and sometimes we come to church, right, and we we see the worship, we we see the commentary and the preaching, the singing and the music playing and the technician work and all that stuff. But then when you go home, there's another battle being fought, right? There, there are other struggles that are that are that are happening. And it is first and foremost super commendable that you guys are sharing such details are, are, and being so transparent. Because I know for a fact, I know for a fact that you guys are not the only couple that struggle with this, right? I know for a fact that you guys are not the only persons that um, face these kind of struggles. But as you said, you're, you're, you're now giving people insight that, listen, wipe out everything that you think you know, right? All, all the young people that, that are coming up to marriage, all the people that are preparing themselves to, to go into this, even the persons that are in it know for 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 uh, whether it be a short time and a long time and things not work wipe out everything that you know and get to know your partner as you said communication is key humbling it yourself and your own desires recognizing that okay if i love this person right i have to i have to look at what they're going through Right. And where I'm able, I compromise and where I can't, I, I, I communicate in love and tenderness. Right. And we meet somewhere in the middle to 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 make this relationship work. Sister, Sister Nikki, you said something that that I I believe 100 percent. And I'll just rephrase it. Um, it's that God, when it comes on to, to marriages, especially. God not going to give you what you want. He's going to give you what you need, right? And then the things that you want, he's going he's gonna to teach you. He's going to develop you into that person, yeah. right? And so in, in our minds, even myself, sometimes I'm, 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 I'm in the process now of, of talking to somebody, preparing myself to get married. And I have all kinds of visions. I have all kinds of plans and dreams and all that stuff. But I also recognize that there's a certain level of reality that plays in when the two heads, the two lives, the two histories start to come in and start to interact, right? And there are things that I think that oh, this after happened, this, this definitely like a go this kind of way or whatever. And then when you get into the, the meat of it, you're like, mm. oh no, this is, a, this, is a, this is not a fairy tale. As, yeah. as Riley said, this is not the Hollywood, this is reality, right? And and I and I and I love that, right? Because it is it is not a this is not a you problem. And I want and I want couples out there to understand this. This is not a you problem or, or, or a Riley problem. Every relationship, every relationship, every marriage has has that that thing that is that can be perceived depending on your perception as working against you or working for you. If you are taking it out on your partner, it's going to work against the relationship. 
But if you're looking at your partner and say, okay, we're going to figure this out together. We're going to go through this storm together. We're going to make this work. It, it doesn't matter how, but, but we're going to trust God and we're going to make this work. Then uh, you give your relationship hope. You give your relationship life. You give your relationship legs to run and walk. And this is what we're talking about, the reality, the reality of young marriages and marriages in general. I, looking at you both, I know for a fact that you both spend some time uh, living your own lives, doing your own things before you came together. How was that transition together expressed in gender roles? Right, you being the man and and um, Nikki being the woman. How, how what does gender roles look like in your dynamic? Okay. All right. All right. Um, before we we go to that, there was something that you said. If you don't mind, if I if I yes, go man, to... go ahead, man. All right. Um. Okay. All right. So you said something about um, after I, I think I finished speaking, you said something about if you love this person, you're going to do, you know, whatever to make, you know, whatever. And I, I was thinking about it that um, for people getting into marriage, really make sure that you love the person. And it's not just a, a sexual tension or yeah. the person look attractive and that's it. Attractiveness fades. Beauty fades after a while. If If you're not really... Um, in love with that person. Um, you know, what, what I found, what, what I realized is that um, for me, I, I know my wife is attractive. I'm not going to hide the fuck. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> Who does in as I am? That way I thought about. <laughs> I, I, I know she's attractive. Um, this guy. Um, <laughs> you know, but it had to be something more than that. Um, I've always said to her that and she's gonna she probably is gonna laugh but i always say to her i i know i have good taste and i have a good eye so i i know i'll always be able to find somebody who is attractive and somebody who looks good but there's always something more that has to be behind it um you know so sorry, suppose i'm blind tomorrow can i still deal with all this person's personality can i deal with this person's you know, behave. I can I deal with those things, and, and and that's how I looked at it. And if you can say yes to that, then no matter what comes, I can guarantee that you'll be able to overcome. Cause God will help you through that. No matter what they do, you're gonna find a way to find the positive in it. Ask about the the gender roles and how it, you know, impacted our our marriage or how we we, we work with that, right? Uh huh. All right. So because. When I when I started to live by myself, like fully live by myself, it was around 2016. So I, I had to learn to do literally everything on my own. And that means I had to learn how to wash, cook, clean, um, even decorate and all of those different things. Um, so when I came into marriage, I, I, I kind of still felt like I had to do all of those things because, you know, I'm just learning for the demo. I mean, I'm still in the mode and then she was just coming here and it was an adjustment period for her. So I felt like I still had to do those things. I remember we went to the supermarket once and um, it was something about cheese. Like I was, you know, I was like, eggs. it was egg. Oh, okay. It was <laughs> eggs. So when she came, cause you know, in Jamaica, there's not like a, at that time, there wasn't like a wide variety of different eggs. You know, here in America, you have, I guess regular, you have jumbo, you have extra large, you have large, you have um, cage free, you have. Yeah. A wide variety yeah. of everything. Yeah, and well, then you have the colors, everything. And um, I used to go shopping with her because she never knew what I liked. Um, sometimes she didn't know like what was what versus, you know, she knew like, she knew there's cheese. But she, she never knew that there was like all the different type of cheese, all the different type of eggs. So I used to go with her and for months I would just keep going with her. And for her, I think I remember her saying to me that like, I'm the woman. I, I want to start going to, you know, doing this stuff because I'm the woman, you know, um, I don't I don't always need your help. So it, it was like an adjustment to. So why are you looking at me like that? Because you're not telling the story correctly. 
this is why I, see this is why i don't talk first i let her talk and then i add my side of the story all right you you pick up the story then all right so what happened was um <laughs> so like he said coming out of jamaica right and you you come to america it's uh it's a wider variety of everything because yeah. everybody lives in Jamaica. You have Hispanics and you have Asians and you have people from Africa and just everywhere. So they are catering to a wide, a wider variety than Jamaica. So when I came here, um, when I went to the supermarket, I didn't know what to buy. When we went to have, when we went to like a fast food joint or whatever, I didn't know what the Polynesian sauce was or stuff like those. So um, we were going to the grocery store together because one, I couldn't drive at the time. So he had to take me and then I didn't know what to buy. So um, we went to the grocery store and we got to the freezer where we were getting eggs. And I said to him, which one do you want or which one should I take? And he said, just choose one. Um, so I got a little agitated because I was like, <laughs> why can't you just tell me which one you want? Cause I don't know what to buy. Um, I don't know that there is like small, medium and large eggs or what, like, <laughs> I thought that the large eggs were like the crocodile looking thing. <laughs> so, um, we got into a little disagreement in the supermarket because I didn't know what to buy. And he was like, you know you want you you're the woman and you want this role um and you're still asking my opinion and so when we got home um we had to really have a conversation about that because i was saying you know i do want to do this i do want to learn but you've been living here way longer than i have and i don't know you know half of the things that i'm supposed to be doing because when you step into that role of a wife, um, and I don't know if people do this intentionally or it's just something that just people just see and perceive, but it's not a switch that you flip and you just automatically know how to be a wife or how to be a husband. It's not a switch. You still have to learn all these things. Right. You have to learn each other's little nuances. You have yeah. to learn each other's little flaws. And you have to learn how to come into that role um, as a wife. So that was very challenging, especially with that transition. Because yeah. when, I, when we got married, um, and... I'm not saying that I am the only person in Mount Zion who has gotten married and come to America, but I think I'm the first person who got married and came immediately when I got married. Cause few weeks after we got married, I was here. And, yeah. yeah. And so it was no job, no church, no family, no friends, just being at home um no son it was cold <laughs> <laughs> yes sir and <laughs> and it was and everything changed like every single thing in my life had changed so going through that transition and trying to figure out okay what am i supposed to do as a wife do i just do what my mom did um what is he supposed to do as a husband? You know, does he just do what his that he saw his dad do? But yeah. the thing is, he's not my dad and yeah. I'm not his mom. Yeah. So we had to learn to figure that our dynamics out together. Yeah. And that was really a challenge for both of us. Yeah. And um, she, he spoke about, you know, learning, realizing that I wasn't her dad. Um, if you ever had her cooking, you know that she can cook. Um, Big up the chef. <laughs> but when 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 we got in the earlier parts of our marriage, when I say she she made me some big plates, <laughs> I was like, and that's why you oh put on the phones, man. Married man belly. I'm, I'm not saying that because I, I you know I still need a good marriage after all of this. But you know, <laughs> uh, but you know when when she made those plates, and I, I, I'm the type of person she can tell you that I don't waste anything, like um. Even from a young age, my mom would say that my mom can tell her that if there is something that we brought to church or something that she cooked, 
I prefer to eat everything that was cooked, like the leftover food first before even eating anything else that's brought into the house or anything that's just cooked. So when she put something on my plate, I, I, I grew up with the mindset that when somebody puts something on your plate, you eat it. As long as, you, <laughs> as, long as you, you're not to the point where you're sick or anything, you just eat. As long as it's on the plate, you eat. So I, I, I just kept eating because it was good and, and I didn't want her to feel like I didn't want her food. Because as she said, you know, when you just get married, you're, you're trying to please your spouse. You're trying to do everything to make them feel good. And how would it look if I said, like, I, I don't want that? Yes, uh, maybe there could have been ways. And we have, we have talked about the ways I could have said it better to explain that, you know, this is a bit more food than I'm used to. But, you know, just lessen the portion. So things like that where I had to learn that she wasn't my mom. Like, if you know my mom, my mom, my mom can do almost everything that a guy can do. She She's able to cut her own yard. She um she sent me pictures of her making um what's it called the uh, the pots like pots to put your plants in and out of concrete mm. flower she, pots yeah flower pots thank you she showed me something that she did on her the driveway that's in Jamaica she, she like she can do all of those things so that's what I was kind of used to so I was like okay you know um like when I'm doing certain stuff I was kind of expecting Navita to be there. You know, like, if I'm doing this, like, Navita, yeah, I need a help. But she wasn't that. And I had to learn that, hey, you're not that. And I had to also learn that, yes, you know, we have our roles as a husband and wife. There, there are things that I'm supposed to do. And there are things that she's supposed to do. But at the same time, we're going to overlap in some areas. Sometimes I have to fill a gap. Like, if she's sick, I got to know how to cook. I have to know uh -huh. how to take care of her. If for some reason, I, I'm, she always says that I'm the better one with the finances. But at the same time, she still has to be able to fill the gap if I'm not there. There, there are things that we, we overlap. But it shouldn't be a point where it feels like I'm just taking everything from her. And that was something that I struggled with at the beginning of the marriage. I just felt like I just had to be around there. And I don't know if it was because she just came up and I knew that it was a brand new, it was a transition and everything was going fast. But... I felt like I had to be there. I remember um, she would go to this, the store to buy things. Um, I would be there with her. Like she went to a clothes store, I'd be there with her. When she went to check out, everybody knows how to check out of a store. Yeah, you have a credit card, you have money. That's that's a simple process. Simple. I'd have to be beside, like I felt like I needed to be beside her to make sure she wasn't messing up. And it, it came to a point where she was like, I'm, I'm not a baby. I'm, I am, you know, I, I'm a capable, a I'm a, I'm a grown woman. <laughs> she, she says. You know, it, it came to a point where I had to learn, like, I need to step back. We both have our roles. And yes, there are going to be times where overlap. But if I'm really going to be what God says I'm supposed to be, I have to make sure that my roles are completed. And I remember talking to somebody and he was saying, he was trying to say that there really aren't any roles, but there aren't any gender specific rules, which I, I don't agree. There are certain things that I'm not going to expect Nikki to do. As long as I'm a, a well and okay, I'm not going to expect Nikki to go out and to cut the lawn. I'm not going to expect her to cut the grass. I'm not going to expect her to to go and change something on the car. Hey, as much as is, as much as is, um, women like to be nowadays, especially now, love to say that we're equal. And I believe we're equal in many regards, but there's still certain things that as a man, that's my area of expertise. You can have an opinion and I will listen to it, but that's my area. I'll take care of you if you take care of me. Or I take care of you and you take care of me. I I love it. I love it. You, it, it doesn't get any more transparent. It doesn't get any more real, right? I, I, I sense from the conversation that you guys aren't trying to hide anything. You guys are being very open about the different struggles and different things that are going on. And this is valuable information. Again, it's it's kind of removing the the fairy tale mindset that we've been fed, right? A lot of the a lot of the um the understanding that we get from what marriage is supposed to be like and relationships supposed to be like. It's from TV, right? Hollywood, Hollywood mm -hmm. pump us with happily ever after. Um, when in reality, it's it's far from that, right? And we're not saying that people can't be happy ever after, but it takes work to get there. 
and, and I love the transparency. The thing I want to ask, though, is being the young couple, right, three years in, how has, or let me not even say how has, but it, was, there, was there counseling prior to, during and the preparation for the marriage? I know after being married, um, has there been counseling or mentoring or what, what does that look like for you guys? Be, be, be as open and honest as possible. Um, there has definitely been counseling and all areas. Uh, yeah. And I, I just want to use this opportunity, you know, to say pastor Campbell did a really excellent job with us, um, in laying that foundation that was really, really important um in starting off our marriage he also made sure to check up on us after um mm -hmm. we were married so we did get some counseling after um marriage it was very important for us because we've spoke about the challenges that we've had and it's it's not every couple that has these specific challenges i mean everybody goes through something but it's not every couple that has these specific challenges and these it was more um our challenges were more sensitive and really needed that kind of help and that kind of support so um we did go through we did go through some counseling um and even after marriage you know we've been going through counseling and every now and again having that one-on-one -on -one check in um with pastor campbell just making sure that you know everything that we are we are stepping into our roles as man and wife and also to ensure that you know we are thriving because for us it's not just about being married and you're just miserable but it's also about thriving in your marriage and understanding how I fit into his puzzle and how he fits into mine and how we align together, you know, and how we navigate through those difficult times. So um, counseling has definitely been something that has helped us. And I know that a lot of people um, are very iffy about that because it has this stigma that's attached to it. And sometimes people feel like, you know, we're in counseling because we're failing. Um, but it wasn't about failing. It was just about recognizing that we need help because we can't do this alone. We love each other and we want to be married to each other. But there are times when you just need that extra help. And there is no shame in that. There is no shame in in um, going out there and seeking that help that you want. Because what that further proves when both of you are willing to do that together is that you really love each other and you really want this to work. Yeah. And I'd also add, um, as she talks about not looking at counseling as you have failed, um, the three of us, we've been to college oh, yeah. and I'm sure we have, I'm sure we have had moments where we've gone to a teacher. We're not doing so well in a class. We've gone to the teacher to get, um, help. Um, I remember a particular instance where I was doing well in a class, but I had a classmate that was struggling. Like he, he was at the point of failing and he went to the the office hours and he worked with the teacher. And when I say that he passed the class with, with a higher grade than me, who was all right, <laughs> because he, went, he did the work with the teacher. So it's the same way. Look at counseling as a way that I don't want my marriage to fail. I, I have tried every avenue. I've, I've tried everything on my end. Um, but sometimes you just need a third person or a third party to just talk who is who's objective can say i hear what you're saying but have you looked from this perspective have you looked from that perspective and i'd also add um counseling comes in in many ways sometimes we think it's just talking to somebody else but sometimes it's like sitting and looking at another marriage sometimes it's even just going to a church service i, I i'll never forget this one service i think it was before we, it was before we were married because we have never really been separated since we've been married. Um, I think we were having some issue. I don't know what it was. 
but it was a fasting service and they and she was in georgia i was in maryland at the time and they called her to lead the i think they called her mother no it was her mother her mother was in georgia at the time yeah her mother was in georgia and they called her mother to lead out the fasting service and she was a she was if you've ever seen sister milton do service you know that she she, she does service. She does service. <laughs> <laughs> she do what she's supposed to. And she was there talking. And for some reason, she started talking about her daughter. I don't know why, but I know it was the Lord. At the time, I didn't know why, but it was the Lord. And she was talking about a time where they didn't have, you know, they didn't have money. And, you know, she told her, her daughter to pray about it. And she in the prayer, she was saying that, um, she knows she's something, something along like that. She's short or she's small, but... If I could have hung the, the glory low so she could pick it and all of that. And um, oh. <laughs> at the time, I, I was on the phone with Pastor because we used to do WhatsApp calls those times. And I had to turn off the camera because hearing that, you know, even in hearing this, the service, yes, we're in a, a spiritual setting, but hearing that, I realized that if this person, as young as she was, willing to pray and willing to do that, you know, the problem I have now it I, I think we can figure it out. Um, things like that, like find different ways. All right, maybe you're not comfortable talking to somebody, but go to a service. I was listening to the men's podcast today um, with Brother Carson, and he spoke about how he was ready to leave. And because he went to a service, they're 19 move and they're 19, you know, encourage him to stay and then give him a reason why he shouldn't leave. And things like that, like find find a service. If I can't talk to somebody, you know, um, look at couples, you know, especially knowing the age that we're at, you know, a lot of couples are being open now about the struggles that they have been through, you know, listen to them, um, find yourself in service. Sometimes just being in the service of God, you, you, you get an encouragement that, 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 you know, makes you push, that makes you think differently about your, your circumstances. Sometimes they hear a testimony and you can't believe that the person went through that but their marriage is still okay. So simple things like that, you know, but counseling, just don't look at counseling as failure. Look at counseling as another um, way of, of, of making sure your marriage doesn't fail. Your marriage doesn't fail until you give up on it. As long as you haven't given up on your marriage, it hasn't failed it. That's the most important thing to think about when it comes to your marriage. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, we're wrapping up now um and we're, we're we're really we're really grateful for all the wisdom that was shared during the session if you could give um an encouragement to persons out there that are either struggling with similar situations as you are um persons that are looking to get married, are thinking that they found somebody, are persons who are in marriages that they believe are failing, right? What 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 could you encourage them with? Um, there was something that I'm borrowing from my husband that he said a couple of weeks ago. And I thought it was very profound. He said, the grass is green where you water it, where you pour water on it. A lot of times we're in this era now of couple goals and we look at people um, from the outside and you don't really know what's going on on the inside and what they've had to had to deal with or are dealing with, you know, going through um in their marriages but the grass is greener where you water it so if you are already married and you feel like it's failing fight for your marriage you know do what it takes because god has blessed all marriages it's an institution that's that's blessed within itself and if you decide that you want this to work it can work for those of you um, who are looking to go into marriage, like you said earlier, everything that you think you know, shh, away with it, because you don't know. 
um, <laughs> you really don't know. But um, when you when you get to that um, state of marriage, so many things are going to come up. So many different adjustments that you have to make that nobody even told you about. You know, having to live with, having to experience the person's morning breath having somebody all the time <laughs> in your space these are the realities of it and so we see this fairy tale um in the movies jonathan spoke about the hollywood thing earlier we see this fairy tale and we think that this is how it's gonna go um but sometimes that's not how it is and and a lot of times too we we think we have this ideal person or this ideal relationship in our minds and god is just saying uh-uh that's not what i have in mind for you because i know what you need and so i would say really depend on the lord and allow him to lead you because when he leads you he gives you what you need and then some he gives you what you really, really need to survive and to get into the kingdom because that's our ultimate goal, you know, to head to the kingdom. And you don't want somebody who is going to hold you back. Um, a couple weeks ago, my brother-in-law said to me at church that if our marriages aren't right, we can't make it into the kingdom. And I believe that with all my heart. So um, I would say if you're looking to go into it, we always say this, allow the Lord to lead you. It's not a myth. It's it's something that's very true. And if you're in there, fight for your marriage because it can and will work. Um so for all of the different um areas of the stages of your relationship and all that, I was just as she was talking, I was just thinking about everything and um at the the initial stage when you're talking to that person, you know. Make sure you know who you are. Make sure you know what you stand for. Make sure you are, you're at a place where you feel, you feel good. Make make sure that you have taken the time to get to know yourself. Make sure that you have learned that, all right, I, I struggle with these things, and you know, you know, just learn your, just learn yourself. A lot of people don't take the time to step back and just learn everything about themselves. Yeah. They. They say, okay, I know I have an issue, but when I get into marriage, it's going to be fine. That's not how it works. Those things get, you come with your baggage, your spouse comes with their own baggage, and it's just a truckload of baggages. And then sometimes children come quick, sometimes children take forever, and those come with, with their own different problems too. So, so before you even like start to get serious with somebody, make sure you're at a place, especially in the church of God, make sure you're at a place where God is really your, your anchor. God is really your resting place. Um, not everybody will be at the high place, you know, when they get into marriage, but make sure that you have that foundation. And even when you get into the marriage, make sure God is still the foundation of the marriage. You know, make the time to worship together. Make the time to, to, to find an avenue to worship. I remember when we started, I think the first time we really interacted over a phone call was a Friday. We had a Friday night worship. That was how we started to actually, that was our first phone call. I never called her before that. That was how we started. And we're still doing it today. Um, the other thing that she kind of said that, you know, forget about everything that you know. Um, a lot of times we, we believe that once we're in the marriage, everything is okay. We're married now, so everything is. But once you say I do, that's where the work starts. And the work is different than what it was when you were just courting. Yeah. It's, it's a totally different ballgame. You know, before when you were courting, you could put on a pretense. Um, when you're in a marriage, after a while, even if you have, if you're trying to pretend, after a while, everything comes out. So make sure that you're putting in the work. Um, make sure that you realize that you have to do different things. You have to find a way to keep your marriage going. Sometimes you have to find, you still have to do your date nights. You, you still have to give your spouse time to themselves sometimes so they can, you know, find themselves again for a lack of a better term so they can come back stronger um for the marriages that feel like they're failing again i said that no marriage is a failure unless you give up you know we, we know that it says till death we know that you know we're not freed from marriage um unless your spouse die um so don't live like your spouse is dead live like your spouse is still alive and once you're alive there's always hope there's always um 
there's always a chance. And even if you feel like your marriage is dead, Lazarus was dead, but he still came back to life. So there's still... <laughs> so there's still... God. There, there, so there's still hope for, for marriage. You know, um, find, just find ways. Like, don't give up on your marriage because God put them together. Um, even if your your marriage starts out rough, and a lot of marriages start out for different reasons. Maybe a child came and they had to get married because it would have looked bad. But don't even that can be be put in a place where where things are are good. Um, maybe you married somebody who you probably initially never loved. You married them out of revenge or whatever, whatever reason it is. Anything can work once you put it in God's hands, and, and that's the the aspect that a lot of marriages I think forget. They, they think it's just them and their spouse. But there's always a third person that both of you are technically married to. God just aligned you to the other person. That, that's all that's happening. Come on, no man. You're just being linked to the other person while you're on this journey. So as long as you're you're relying on God, you know, the marriage will work out. Yes, I'm not going to say that you're not going to have problems. Um, I'm not saying that everything will just be smooth sailing. You're going to have... Every marriage has some issue. Not every marriage has the same issue, but every marriage has issues. But once you are doing what you're supposed to do as according to the words of God, things will work out. You know, and the last thing I'll say is just learn to communicate. If you don't know how to do it, find somebody who can help you through. Because communication is so important. Is it People people don't realize that. Never eat and I are at a point where, and, and, and Pastor, I, anytime Pastor see him, you know, I was a child joke around and he was a dude, but there was one time I was talking to Pastor and she came up because she, anybody who knows me know that I kind of do the tech thing for Georgia right now. And you know, the tech thing for everybody, my For the whole church. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so a lot of times I'm, I'm there like talking to Pastor because he's asking me, how was this, how was that, or... I'm telling like we, you know, I need to do this or whatever. So many times if church finishes nine o'clock, if she doesn't come, we're not going to leave to like 12 because I'm going to talk to pastor. I'm going to talk to other people. So she will come and just stand up and everybody's looking around trying to figure out why, why is she just standing? And I'm looking at her like, okay, I know it's time to go. <laughs> uh, you know, so, so learn to communicate in different ways. There have been, there have been days where we don't text, like we don't send actual words. We just send emojis. Let me send one smiley face emoji. She send one kiss face emoji. And, and the conversation just... No. <laughs> I don't know. So, you know, like, learn to, to communicate. Um, there, there's this thing that we do know. Um, and Pastor did it. Pastor said it, but he didn't... I don't... He didn't realize what was happening when he said it. So he was in the lesson, and I think it was, what, the last lesson? Um, wasn't. I don't remember what the name of the lesson was, but it was... Either the last, this Sabbath or the Sabbath before. So pastor said the word dead. In our family, dead means something. Totally. <laughs> it's an inside it's, joke. Yeah, it's an inside joke. <laughs> so like even things like that, like, like find, find a word, find a phrase that means something to, to, to you guys. That when you, you connect, when you hear it, you just look at each other and you laugh. <laughs> you know, find something that no matter how angry you are, if a person says that to you, you just stop and you're like, you know what? I'm being stupid. I, I know we're upset. I know we're, we're arguing now, but you know what? Let, let's just stop. Let's go for some ice cream. Let's go for a walk. Let's go do something. Just find those little good moments and, and really live in the good moments. A lot of times we're, we're so negative that we, we always just think about the negative stuff. But if you can find, if you can find it in your heart to be, stop and say, okay, I know we're going through this, but I still remember last week when you cooked my favorite meal or I remember last week when you, you gave me a massage or the week before when we watched a movie, like when you're going through that, remember those good times that you had. Cause the good times for the most part are always going to be more than the bad times. Yeah. That That's how I look at it. And just, just find, just find ways. I know I'm, I've, I've been going on, but yeah, just <laughs> find different ways. <laughs> but, but it's, it's, I appreciate it. Right, because there are persons out there that need this word. They need the story. They need to hear the truth of, of what is happening. And I hope those that are listening get the same vision and encouragement that I had got while listening to you guys. Because from the beginning of the episode to the end of the episode, it's almost like a summary of what a, a marriage is. 
You get know what I'm saying? It started so it started off a little a little nerve wracking. You know, you guys came on, you didn't know what, what to expect, what was gonna happen, right? As you got into it, you're gonna okay, you started to chill out a little bit, but then things started to get real. Things started to get deep. Things started to get intense, and you're like, oof, like this is this is real life now. Right. But then as you guys figured it out and, you know, we came back to a point that we all can agree on and conversations that were a lot easier. You guys rest back into those things and you know you're able to give back to people. And so that is that is something that I want us to to to, to not miss as we as we listen to these these young people share their reality. Um, I know that you guys are 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 what like just under 30 or just above 30 right so this these are young people in young marriages these are young people in young marriages and so i i know i'm not yet married but i i encourage you guys i encourage you guys i, I tell you guys all the time that you guys are an example right you guys are a real example when i when i when i come in the church my and i think you know right and as riley shared earlier he's five years old Right in the field, the man is five years old, and what you heard today was not just physical growth, but spiritual maturity. This was a man that he, he, he took the Lord seriously, right? And with the help of his wife, that that has been in the church likewise, they they both sought the Lord together to to bring forth the the relationship that 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 we are now witnessing. And so I just want to encourage you guys to continue to be an example. Know that this is going to be aired at some point. Um, persons are going to look at you now with, with the utmost respect because they're going to see you from a distance and be like, oh, I wonder what the relationship like. And then when they listen to this, they'll be like, wow, like a real life thing. You know, this is because we don't share this a lot. And that's that's the reality. That's the reality of the situation. We don't We don't get this level of transparency. And so I, I thank you guys very much for, for coming on and sharing. Um, I thank you for sacrificing the time to come and, and give somebody an extra boost. Somebody that is on the fringe of just saying, I can't deal with this woman or I can't deal with this man. You know, you, you, you encourage them to keep fighting, right? Because it, it's not dead until you let it die, right? And so um, be encouraged, listeners, young people. Um, those that are prepping for marriage, those that are in marriage, those that are not so young but are struggling, be encouraged um, and pray for them. Wherever you are, no matter what category you find yourself in, pray for them. And not only them, but all marriages. One thing that we see, unfortunately, is that a lot of marriages nowadays are failing or struggling, right? And And... Unlike you guys that are willing to come on and share those things, many of them suffer in silence. Many of them go through this hurt, go through this pain, and nobody knows. And so to those persons, we want to also pray for you. We want to also send a word of encouragement to you to trust God. As Sister Riley said in a man, God is loving, right? And so if you're struggling to figure out what love is, go back to the master, go back to the creator. Right, the marriage that that is set is an institution from God, right? And and it's gonna take a lot of time to kind of get into the scriptures and and build the argument. But just know that your marriage is a representation of the relationship that God has with the church. Yeah. And if 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 you're if you're willing to give up on your marriage, what you're also saying by extension is that God is willing to give up on you, and that is not true. And because God is not willing to give up on you, you should not be willing to give up on your spouse. God bless you all. God keep you all. Thank you again, Riley's, for coming on. And that is the end of another episode of Buzz. All about the future. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Same on Zion, you.